Hi everyone, my name is Lolly. I'm the Editorial Assistant at Professional Beauty and Aesthetic Medicine and welcome to this joint uh, webinar being hosted by um, Pam Cushing today, who is an aesthetic practitioner and Salima educator in the science of light therapy. Uh, the webinar is titled Let It Grow, Let It Grow, Let It Grow. We're shedding light on hair loss and restoration. Uh, with Restore, which is Saliva's newest device for treatment of hair loss, hair restoration, skin rejuvenation, and wound healing. Um, so I'm going to pass over to Pam, who is going to take you through a presentation. And please do leave any questions for Pam in the comments, and we will come back to those at the end. Thank you very much, Pam, if you want to take over and introduce yourself. Thanks, Lottie. That's lovely. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining um, this little webinar that we're running here. One of the first questions I want to ask you, how many of you did the ELSA impersonation when you saw the title of the webinar? I can't not sing it every time I read it. So um, it would be interesting to see how many of you did your ELSA impersonations in the title. So as the, the, the webinar, we're looking at um, the use of light therapy um, with our focus on hair loss and hair restorations. We're going to look at the science, how does it work? Um, and I think what interests most people is actually looking at the results for both men and women. We'll look at scalp treatment protocols and about how you can in integrate um, this element into your practice. Um, with regard to Saluma, there's some contact details there for you if you'd like more information with regard to the Saluma Restore or any of the other devices that they have in the market. Um, and the distributors for the Saluma device here in the UK is a company called Unique Skin. So you'll find their number there. So without further ado, so what is light therapy? I mean, it's a people ask me this question all the time. And then essentially what it is, it is the application of very specific wavelengths of light to obtain a, a, a therapeutic benefit to whatever tissue um, an area that it's been exposed to. We categorize it as low level light therapy using very minimum power. Right, and we know clearly with the devices that are on the market that it has a variety of applications across all sorts of medical fields. So I think in terms of the science, we know the science because NASA's seminal work clearly demonstrated the wavelengths that would be beneficial and, and effective depending on wave, wavelength they were knowing. Okay, but it's about what does that light do? All right, and what light does is it emits what we call photons. So these photons are absorbed by the mitochondria and the cell membranes. Yeah, and particularly with the mitochondria, which is actually, it's our Duracell battery within our skin cells, is that it provides the energy that the cell would require to actually function at an optimum level. Okay, so what it does there is it actually stimulates the release and the elevation of ATP, which is to say the energy for the cells in order to function. And what this increase does is it basically turbocharges the cell. So we have a, a cascade of metabolic and cellular changes going on at a cellular level. Okay, so it works very well. And I think in terms of looking at it, light energy is absorbed, okay? When we look at nitric oxide, now nitric oxide is released into the bloodstream, okay? And what that does, it has a tendency to vasodilate. So what you get there is that you're getting an acceleration in terms of oxygenation to the cells, nutrients, um, and a whole cascade. I mean, this slide may be a little bit confusing to some people, but you're getting this massive cascade. So what you get is cellular respiration, which is how the cells function, that will accelerate because obviously there's more oxygen, more nitric oxide, which is causing that vasodilation. So we're actually improving things in terms of um, cellular functions with regard to the oxygen as well as the ATP from the mitochondria. Okay, so looking at it from a hair loss, we do know it's brilliant, light therapy has been proven, there's certainly plenty of clinical papers out there that show it helps really well with regard to skin rejuvenation, um, for pain, muscle spasms, and also for wound healing. But more latterly, we're looking at its benefit in terms of hair loss. So I'd just like to share a few images with you that you can see here. So this is a lady, she's a 77 year old, um, and you can quite clearly see on that image on the left-hand side is that she's got what we would call diffuse thinning of the crown of her head. I think what's important is that when you're looking at each series of those, those, those images is that they were taken at the same stage between haircuts. And I think this is really important that if you're going to be taking photographs in your clinical practice, you do need to be mindful in terms of 
you know, when they have their hair cut, has it been washed, styling and all sorts of things. So you can look over a 16 week period, the dramatic improvement and difference in terms of um, the, the hair growth. What's important also there, no products, no supplement and no other modalities. So in terms of modalities, there's no microneedling, there's no PRP, we know where that works very well. There's no PRP with toxin. It is pure light therapy, which I think for each and every one of you looking at it, you cannot deny that improvement in her hair. M massive, you know, and I'm sure she's absolutely delighted. OK, we have another one here. Now, this is a 60 year old man. Um, and I think it's important is that when you're looking at this, which, you know, and, and it's it's comments that I get asked a lot is that, you know, has the hairstyle been manipulated to sort of, you know, as it's grown, are you covering bald areas? And quite clearly, you can see from this gentleman here. Yeah, it's used as a standalone. OK, so you can see the vast improvement between the two images. But I think what's really good is actually looking at the um, the vertex, that um, trichometer. All right. So if you're looking at that left hand side one, yeah, there is a there is a delay in terms of timing. But let's realize, you know, we had lockdown and all sorts of various things that affected our business. But you cannot deny in terms of that scientific imagery, the massive improvement in the amount of hair growth that they can see. Yeah. So you've got that kind of tool. We obviously need to thank um, Sharina at Ace Aesthetics Clinic for for sharing this data with us. OK, so we've got another one here. Um, just going through this. All right. So this is a male. He's age 60. Exactly the same principle. No products used. So there wasn't any minoxidil shampoos that were being used. No supplements and obviously no modalities. So again, like I mentioned before, microneedling we know works very well. PRP, toxin, mesotherapy products do work very well. OK, each photo was taken four weeks after the regular haircut. And you can see that in that 16 week period, that massive improvement, even after eight weeks, yeah, you definitely see a strengthening and uh, the amount of hair growth. I mean, if you look at this image, we've definitely got a thinning patch there. Yeah, so it's more, it's diffuse, but there's some areas on his scalp where there's actually more hair loss. And you can definitely see the difference where that area definitely got hair growth. Yeah, he's still got some thinning there. We've not got a full set of hair, but you know, this is a vast improvement in what he had beforehand. And again, you know, absolutely delighted with the results. OK, so let's look at those wavelengths. And as I mentioned earlier on, we were talking about that seminal work done by NASA in terms of what wavelengths work very well. All right. And they clearly proved through their scientific studies that there are three main wavelengths that are effective. Yeah, we have blue light that penetrates to 465 nanometers. We have red light, which penetrates to uh, for uh, 640 nanometers. And obviously the most deeply penetrating is our near infrared at 880. And I actually love this image because I think as a sagittal section, you can see very clearly exactly where those wavelengths are hitting. So our blue light is really the epidermis. Our red light is right the way through the epidermis and the reticular and papillary dermis, or the papillary and reticular, because that's how it goes down. And obviously our near infrared, which is the most deeply penetrating, which will actually penetrate down to bone. OK, so looking at light therapy for all of us as practitioners um, running our busy clinics, what we want is that we want to be able to provide treatment that are going to be effective. So when we're looking at light therapy in particular, there are four requirements that are, are needed in order for us to get the greatest efficacy in terms of our exposure to light therapy. So the first one is a very specific wavelengths. Yeah. The second is the amount of energy that's used by the device in order to deliver those wavelengths. The third is treatment time. And the fourth is proximity to skin. OK, each and every one of those to me are the most important. OK, so when we're looking at um, doses, yeah. We're looking first and foremost about optimum. So we're looking at what we call an Arndt-Schultz wavelength. And essentially what that means is what energy do we need to get optimum dose? Yeah, because sometimes too much energy doesn't always mean better. Too much energy can actually put us into danger zones. All right. So I kind of equate it to you've got a really bad headache and you take one paracetamol. OK, it's OK. It works, but it's not enough. You take two, 
your headache goes away, yeah? And you're just thinking, before you take your paracetamol, I really want to get rid of this headache, so we take three, yeah? And moving into that, we're going into that high dose, which is the potential for giving us danger. So too much light therapy can be toxic and can cause skin damage. So we do know in terms of the optimum doses, how much energy we require by the device to deliver safe wavelengths. All right. The other thing also is about that proximity to skin. Yeah. Or a tissue area that you're treating. OK. And that is what we look at in terms of the inverse square law. Now, this is a physical quantity. Yeah. Where it's actually looking at how dis and what distance we have from the light source to the skin. All right. So certainly this is one of the uniqueness of Saluma is getting it as close as practically possible. All right, because every time you move light source from away from your treatment area, your ability for the tissue to absorb that light energy or those photons are diminished by times four. OK, so getting light therapy as close as practically possible, where it's comfortable for your clients um, or your patients will give you the best opportunity for your cell membranes and your mitochondria to absorb photon energy. You move that distance away, you're reducing it by times four. So you may be exposing them to light therapy, but they're not able to capture all of that photon energy. So for me, we know in terms of specific wavelengths, blue, red, near infrared, proven by science. Yeah, low energy to get us maximum without creating any dangers in terms of toxicity. Treatment time, all right? Now the treatment time in terms of the studies shows that 30 minutes is your optimum for full absolute absorption, all right? Um, in clinical practice, you may think that's a little bit of a long time. It doesn't really matter. I think if you want to do it for 20 minutes, well, 20 minutes is better than no minutes. It just means you're not gonna get absorption to the maximum, all right? You will still get absorption of those photon energy, but you're not gonna get maximum, yeah? And of course, it's about respecting that inverse square law, which is the proximity to skin. So you need to get these as close as comfortable for your clients and your patients. And Saluma as a device certainly does that. Okay, so looking again at some more before and afters, and again, we need to thank uh, Sharina at S Aesthetics Clinic here in the UK. 47 year old man, yeah, uses a standalone. All of these before and after images that you see through from Saluma in terms of certainly for hair loss, but any other images you see with regard to skin rejuvenation or wound healing, they will always be light therapy only. There will be no modalities, no other infinite treatments, no supplements, no, no other hair care, whatever. Okay, so we're looking at that and you can see very clearly he has what we would consider to be a typical male pattern baldness. OK, so we've got definite thinning on this crown here. Not easy to see in the image, but he's obviously got some thinning in the temporal area there. OK, and again, look at that difference in the thickness and the luxuriousness of his hair. OK, but what you can't take away from is the absolute pictorial evidence that you can see a massive increase in hair follicular growth which is amazing, okay? So if any of you are really looking at, at moving into this as being part of your armamentum within your treatment clinics, and you're going to focus on it, then you need to maybe consider being able to have this um, evidence to be able to assess how many hair follicles are there and do we have an improvement, okay? Another one, so we've got another one here, okay? Saluma, before Saluma. So again, he's got that very diffuse hair thinning, okay? Um, reluctant to try it. I don't want to be disrespectful here, but, you know, some people can be slightly cynical about how the benefits of light are going to work. So he was a little bit reluctant to use the device in the early stages because he thought, well, how's that going to work? Da, 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 da. But after 12 weeks, look at that dramatic improvement. So we've got a definite improvement in more hair follicles being stimulated and therefore growing. So he's got, still got He's still got thinning, you can see that because you can still see the scalp is visible. But in terms of the density of that hair, because of the stimulation of the, the dormant hair follicles, he's definitely got more hair growing. Um, and he obviously is now convinced that light therapy works. OK, um, another one here before Saluma and again after 10 weeks. All right. So you can see again, typical male pattern baldness here, yeah? losing in the temples. You can see that very clearly, but definitely on the crown there. And like most, because he doesn't have hair to protect him, he's obviously banged himself on, I don't know, the window, the garage door or something. So he's got a little wound there. And actually using Saluma will have a double 
pronged approach. Yes, yeah? stimulation of those hair follicles, but certainly accelerate that healing from that wound. And you can quite clearly see 10 weeks, what a dramatic improvement in the density. Yeah. So where he's most thin, where he's had that little wound, look how it's really stimulated, really grown. They've really kicked into life those dormant follicles. OK, so um, I think the, the proof is in the pictorial pudding, as they say. We've got a definite improvement. And again, same principle. Can't reiterate it enough. This is pure light therapy. No other modalities. OK. So again, another lady here, I'm not too sure about the history of this lady, um, but she's definitely, you can see that a female pattern baldness where you have that diffuse uh, thinning over the crown. Okay, apologies, the images aren't exactly the same, but these have been taken by the patient herself. So she's a 69 year old lady before Saluma, and there she is with a lovely, thick, lustrous silver hair, five months after Saluma restore. OK, and she's over the moon. You can't see, but I think she's smiling under that pixelated image there. OK, so here are a few testimonials that um, we kind of figure are, 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 are useful for you to see, because I think it's coming from them. It's not about us telling you how wonderful it is, although we can certainly show you that that pictorial evidence. But there's a, a comments from an anonymous patient survey. Yeah, easy to use you notice a change in less than 15 days. And again, I think that when you're managing something like this, which has a, a huge psychological impact on, on both men and women, in having the ability to say, I actually started to notice a difference literally within two weeks, amazing. I think the second um, thing, uh, testimonial there, I'm not going to read them all out because you're all quite capable of reading. I think when we looked at the impact of COVID, I'm not sure if any of you have noticed, but there are a lot of people that were suffering from what we would call stress alopecia or hair thinning. Um, not only as a consequence of, I think that stress that we all went through globally, but those who suffer from COVID, yeah, okay. So she noticed that after a time that her hair had stopped falling out. So she stopped losing that, yeah. And you can see there, inflammation is down. I have a lot of regrowth. I use it on my hair for hair loss twice a day. I also use it for anti-aging three to four times a day. So again, what you have with the device is that you've got the versatility. You can use it anywhere, which for me with Saluma, because of its shape taking and shape holding uh, capacity and facility means you can use it anywhere. So what's not to love? OK, so when we look at hair loss in terms of facts, yeah, OK, this is all in US dollars. So, you know, we just kind of need to work about that. OK, so it's an 8.4 billion market in 2018 and is projected to reach 12.1 billion by 2026. So, you know, we've got four years here. It's not just a male problem. OK, it has a, a huge psychological impact, both for men and women. All right. I think for women, because they tend to have much more of a diffuse female pattern, there is the ability for women to maybe style their hair so that they can cover it. But it creates a lot of problems. Yeah. And they say to here in terms of aging process, 40 percent of women will have a visible hair loss by the time they get to the 40s and start in their, their menopause. Treatments often, you know, are available. They can be painful. They can be very expensive. And sometimes treatment protocols can be very lengthy. I do a lot of mesotherapy and I know certainly on the scalp, it can be quite uncomfortable. Yeah, you know, dim, um, you know, uh, micro needling on the scalp can also be quite uncomfortable. But these sort of processes take a long time and they do already being psychologically disadvantaged become even more so if they're not beginning to see a result. So for me, incorporating it and you can do it in combination therapies, we all know they work very well together is the ability for them to be able to start noticing a change within a very short space of time. And it's not costly to them. Okay, so when you're looking at the global market, we're looking at there, all right? So when you're looking at it from a non-surgical perspective, you know, surgical is very expensive and it is, um, you know, prohibitive for a lot of people. So what we know with light therapy is that it is proven. There's enough clinical data out there now to support that light therapy for hair loss has been proven. It is painless. That's the most wonderful thing. It is completely painless. It's a relaxing treatment because actually all you're doing is having, you know, sitting there with um, the light, you know, on, on your scalp. It's very effective. We know that non-invasive. 
but as I mentioned earlier on, using in combinations will give you better results. So there's a lot of mesotherapy products that are out there in terms of looking at not only scalp health, but actually nutrition to improve the hair follicle in the bulb. Okay, we know PRP and the use of toxin works extremely well with microneedling. There's certainly stem cell therapy that is coming through. And we've obviously got the use of topical hair care, which, which um, can be used in combination. So light therapy for me is a great opportunity to introduce it into your, your, your practice because it's not costly in terms of initial purchase to you for the device, but obviously to patients. Okay, so we know there's a lot of causes. Obviously, there's a genetic involvement there, and we know certain ethnic groups will have a greater propensity for that, either male or female pattern baldness. But we will get problems in terms of hormonal changes and medical conditions, uh, pregnancy, childbirth, menopause, thyroid problems. And of course, what we've got is that, that horrible, horrible C word, and it's not Christmas, um, with chemotherapy and radiotherapy and things like that. Certain medications can affect it, and we know there's a big correlation link with stress into hair thinning and hair loss. So we, we kind of know exactly what's going on. So looking at it, you know, this is not my area expertise. I don't profess to be a trichologist in any shape or form, but this is just giving you a little bit of understanding in terms of how a hair growth cycle um, activates. So we go through three, three phases with our hair growth. So we have an anagen phase, which is our active growing phase. So this is where the cells in the root of the hair will actively divide, start to grow rapidly, and you'll get about a centimeter growth a month. Yeah. And you can stay in that active growth for anything up to two to seven years. OK, um, for me, I know that I get to a certain stage with my hair and it doesn't grow past that, that, that stage. All right. We then go into what we call a catadin stage, which is that transitional phase between the cycles lasts about two to three weeks. Yeah. Thirty five percent of all hair at this stage are in the stage at any given moment. So, you know, our hair will go through different cycles, in different parts of that scalp. It's not a it's not a set pattern. Yeah, okay, the outer root sh shrinks and then the hair stops growing and is no longer in that active phase. We then go into a telogen phase, which is that resting phase in the hair growth cycle. That's where that follicle is completely inactive. Yeah, and six to eight percent of hair at any point are in that stage and tends to last about 100 days on the scalp. Okay, what you'll get then is a chemical chain reaction within that cycle where it will then trigger in into an anagen phase. OK, so it's a very simple process in terms of hair growth. So how does it work? All right. And in fact, what we noticed is that as way back as 1967, I mean, it's crazy when you think it's only really just got FDA approval and we've got the clinical studies and the papers to, to demonstrate that it works. But what happens is that you get this modulation and migration of cytokine levels, growth factors, mediators of inflammation and increased oxygenation. So all you're getting is a huge cascade, just like you do in the skin on the face when we're looking at light for, for, for skin rejuvenation, is that you're getting, because of that photon energy being absorbed and that stimulation through the mitochondria, this is going to happen in the scalp. You know, it's no different, yeah, that you get a massive growth in growth factors calming down and reducing inflammatory processes in the scalp, which of course will lead to a vasoconstriction. And what we're wanting is vasodilation. We mentioned that about nitric oxide and we're getting then increased oxygenation, which leads to better hair growth. Okay, so we do know now, we do have FDA clearance and CE approval that we know that it works very well for androgenic alopecia. Yeah, to promote for those that suffer from male pattern baldness and obviously for, for the women who suffer from uh, female pattern baldness. And they are very distinct uh, patterns. You would never see either gender in either end of the, um, the pattern that they, they tend to go. We know it works very well on all skin types, Fitzpatrick one through to six. So it hasn't got any impact doesn't generate any heat in the scalp, so there's no risk of any potential for stimulating melanocytes to produce pigment. It doesn't create heat in the skin, which means it's, it's perfectly safe for the higher skin types. So this is just a pictorial view for you where you can just basically see um, the different types of pattern baldness. So we've got the male pattern baldness and we've got the female pattern baldness. You see that bottom there, it says the grayed out examples are not cleared for LED treatments. And the only reason why that's in there is that when they were doing the clinical studies, those types of pattern 
So if you're looking at the, the women where you've got this very advanced stage, very few women presented at this stage. So there isn't the scientific evidence to support that it has a benefit. OK, so from an FDA perspective, it's not cleared for that because there isn't the evidence. doesn't mean to say it isn't going to work. It's just that there isn't the clinical evidence now. And the same when you're looking at it from a male perspective. It really just means that those subjects that put themselves forward for clinical study weren't being able to be categorized in those kind of um, categories. doesn't mean to say it isn't going to work. I think that's an important thing for you to remember. So by all means, um, consider, you know, if you've got people who are presenting, women who are presenting with this very, very marked degree of hair thinning, then, you know, by all means, try it. Bottom line is you've got absolutely nothing to lose. And the same with male pattern baldness. OK, so it's not that it's not going to work. It's just that we don't have that evidence yet. I'm sure we will get it in the future. OK, so looking at the Saluma Restore for scalp treatments. OK, it's one device. It comes with the three wavelengths, so it's one device in three treatments. So from a clinical perspective, you won't need to buy one for the hair, to buy one for the face, to buy one for the joints. It is a very versatile device. So you've got the um, near-infrared, which will be for hair, okay, um, which will help to reverse and obviously prevent further hair loss. We've obviously got the red light, which we know is for aging and dermal wound healing. And as I say, we've got the near infrared again, which we can use just pure, purely for pain. So it's a very useful and, and very versatile device. OK, so looking at protocols and again, you know, it's like anything else. Yeah, single treatment, 30 minutes. OK, all Saluma devices are programmed for 30 minutes. If you make a decision for whatever reason to reduce that time, you're obviously going to have to set your own timers. OK, use the light therapy every other day for 16 weeks, all right? I think the 16 weeks is to manage their expectations as well as yours, all right? You may get brilliant results after 12, where they feel that they don't need that every other day and then they can go onto a maintenance program, but definitely treatment program is for 16 weeks, okay? You need to make sure that their hair is clean, their scalp is clean, and then depending on how, where their pattern baldness is, is try to separate the hair as much as you can so that you can expose that scalp to the areas where you're getting the most hair loss or where you want to see the best regeneration. Okay. So in terms of the, this, and when you're looking at it in terms of a commitment, you know, it's a lot. Yeah, 16 weeks. So looking at it in terms of how you move forward with this, then you've obviously got opportunities. You can either get them to commit to come into the um, your, your, your clinic, and this is where the Saluma Elite would probably come in handy, because they wouldn't need to take up a treatment room. They could be sitting in a chair and then the dome come over the head, so it doesn't need to be an attended treatment. Um, but there's also that opportunity for you to um, consider actually getting one that you can either rent out to your, your clients. So they would take it home. They can treat themselves. You know, they can do twice a day, every other day, as much as they want to. Or there's an option for you to consider to actually retail them from your clinic. And, and certainly uh, Unique Skin, which are the distributors here, will be able to guide you, all right? I think for me, this is wonderful because it's a great um, modality to use that's not costly, yeah? really helps with that hair restoration service. And I think that this is an untapped market, okay? You've got an amazing way to increase your, your, your income revenue, whether that's through a rental program with the device or whether you're looking at actually retailing it in your clinics, okay? And as I say, from if you're gonna keep it in a clinic, it doesn't need to be an attended treatment. You can actually literally just put them in a chair in a little side room, I don't know, in the waiting room, depending on how shy they feel, um, and, and you can get on with, with, with other business. Okay, so as we've seen with all of the before and after images, it can be a standalone um, treatment. You don't need to do it. You know, you will get results. Obviously, you can incorporate it as part of other medical hair loss solutions, like we've mentioned, you know, if you're doing PRP, if you're doing mesotherapy with toxin, stem cells, whether you're getting them on, on um, specific home care in terms of shampoos and lot. So it does work as a supplementary. And as I say, you know, you've got that ability for either retail, rental, you know, or other programs and really does help to 
increase your your revenue stream within your businesses okay so we've already mentioned that this is what i call for salumas their show off page all right and this really just shows you from a device perspective in terms of its efficacy Saluma wins hand down. Every single one of their awards that you see there have been voted by people who use the device um, that works very well. So thank you so much for your time. There are the details um, if you'd like to make a note of them, either screenshot or write them down, which is the um, authorised distributor for the UK and Ireland, uh, Unique Skin, and they will be very happy to answer all your questions and support you with anything that you need to know. So I, without further ado, I thank you so much for your time and uh, any questions? Yeah, thank you so much, Pam. That was really great and interesting to um, hear about the device. We have got a couple of questions for you. Um, the first question is, is the device suitable to use if you already have thick hair to improve hair growth rather than to work on hair loss? I think the short answer to that question is, is probably yes. But the one thing you will have to do if you already have good hair is that you're really going to have to make sure that it's probably going to take a little bit of time, but you're going to have to create partings within your hair and exposed to light. So so that that would probably help. So whether you I don't know if you're a female, if you just sort of braid your hair into like mm -hmm. those cornrows or whatever, and then stick the light on, um, it definitely would improve it because it's about scalp health. And if you've got a very healthy scalp, it stands to reason that you're going to get a healthy hair bulb. So with that vasodilation, the release of that nitric oxide, you're getting greater nutrients, oxygen, but also the ability for cellular waste. But yeah. you, you'll have to make sure that you can expose the scalp. Um, it'll have a job trying to penetrate through a thick mop of hair like mine. Yeah, mine, I think. <laughs> and um, Nicole would like to know what's the protocol for maintenance after the 16 week period of treatment? It is a commitment. And I think this is where perhaps from a business perspective, you consider retailing is that they're looking at it twice a week. Yeah. As maintenance. Yeah, and um, following on from that, Candice would like to know um, if you've covered retail costs at all or if you know anything about retail costs or if that is something they would have to go to Unique Skin for. I think they'd have to go to Unique Skin for that. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't like to, to put myself out there and tell them how much the device is going to cost and how much they would make. I think that's something, I think like anything else, the more you buy, the cheaper they get. But, you know, that would be something that they would need to speak to the distributor. About. But I think it's a great, you know, particularly for the hair loss, because it is such a commitment in terms of time and that maintenance program that um, it would be in their interests to purchase. And they're much better off purchasing it directly from you than they are dying on a website. Yeah, of course. And on the uh, subject of cost as well, do you know a uh, treatment cost plan? You know, I think it's like anything else. It's a commitment. It's a long period of time. I think I work on the same principle as I would do if I was doing for skin rejuvenation for a face. I think your demographic will dictate, um, you know, money. Mm -hmm. We're all going through really difficult times. You know, I think you could, you know, 25, 30 pounds, I think is a really good price. You know, you might want to say, well, you know, set it as a treatment plan and if they pay for this then they get certain number three you know I think all of you know how to manage your business in terms of getting the best prices mm, I guess that's the good thing with devices like this way they can have little and often treatments it's you can make it more affordable but because they're more often and, and, it's treatment, and it's a treatment that works and it's not a lot of money you know when you compare it to things like say micro needling or doing it with prp and toxin you know you're talking you know you're working into the hundreds there and that that's a very costly process so for me looking at light therapy is just literally as a standalone modality getting the results that we've seen on these before and after images i mean it's like cheap at half the price and mm. um, we've got another question asking whether the red light in the restore is the same as the red in other models. Yes, exactly the same, exactly the same penetration. Yeah. Perfect. And how does the restore di differ from the Saluma face? It, short answer to that is it doesn't. Mm. It doesn't. One of the things that's important, because obviously if you've got the restore, if you've got the Saluma face or the Saluma light, which will give you the three wavelengths, is that those devices will automatically default to pulse. Mm -hmm. 
So when you're going to be using the red or the near infrared for hair, you need to switch the pulse off. Okay, and the only reason why that is, is that all of the clinical studies that they did to support the evidence, the pulse had been switched off. So it was permanent light. And for those who know Saluma or have got the devices, you know that you have an intensity of light and then it fades down with the pulse and then intensity of light and fades down. If you're doing it for hair, you will need to switch that pulse off. Perfect. And I think that's all the questions we have. I don't think right. we've got any more from Facebook. Oh, sorry. Anybody so answer how many saying? Yeah, someone just asked me you expand on the pulse for face that you were talking about. Oh, OK, so the pulse is... I, when I talk about it, and I, I try to use analogies because I find life a little bit easier that way, um, it's a bit like there's the intensity of the light, which is that maximum photon energy. And with the pulse, what happens is that that intensity wavers a bit. And essentially what that's doing is it's allowing the mitochondria in particular to have a rest because they're using energy to absorb energy. So what they're having is they're having a tiny little break with the pulse so that they can absorb more energy when the, the wavelength um, intensity gets higher. Okay. So that's the benefit of the pulse. And um, we've also had a question from Candice asking if in that case, can all the lights be used for hair or does it have to be the restore for hair loss? No, well, the short answer is no, if I'm honest with you. I think when you look at hair as an issue, if you've got somebody who doesn't have good scalp health, they've got a lot of oil production, they've suffer from dandruff so you've got an unhealthy scalp actually using the blue light we know blue light works very well in actually normalizing sebaceous gland activity reducing the production of sebum and of course you know from a skin perspective with killing c acne bacteria but on the scalp doing it for blue you know it would would would, would work because it helps in terms of oiliness and control Perfect, thank you. And one last question from Helen is asking, in that case, would it be possible to start a treatment with what they already have as a device and then sell from there with the restore? Yes. Perfect. And that's a great, great way to end it. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. And um, thank you to all of you who um, who took the time out to listen to the webinar. I hope you've, uh, you've enjoyed it. I appreciate it. I still yeah. want to know how many of you sung. <laughs> <laughs> I did every time <laughs> and thank you also to uh, Saluma for sponsoring this webinar if you want to go back and watch it again it will be available on Professional Beauty and Aesthetic Medicine's Facebook and Instagram account so you can go back there thank you so much everyone have a lovely day great thanks so much bye thanks, bye